Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast for today, Wednesday, July 6th, 2016. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Acting Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, wishes to advise that Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Vance Amory, has been released from hospital in Toronto, Canada. In an update on Premier Amory's condition, today, July 6th, Minister Brantley told the Department of Information that the Premier is doing better. He is out of hospital and advises that he is doing just fine. He thanks the public for their prayers and assures them he was never in any danger, Minister Brantley said. The update follows a statement by the acting Premier yesterday, July 5th, indicating that Premier Amory had fallen ill while on official business in Canada and was hospitalized for treatment and observation. The Nevis Mango and Food Festival is scheduled to begin on Friday, July 8th, and the Nevis Tourism Authority is hosting a number of events leading up to the grand launch of this weekend's festival. In addition to local chefs, the festival will feature Iron Chef Judy Chu from the Food Network and UK's celebrity chef Natasha Corret of Honestly Healthy. Chief Executive Officer at the Nevis Tourism Authority, Greg Phillip, gave us a details of the events for Thursday. Said on Thursday morning um, there's an event um, that is made for television um, where they're going to be doing food a cooking demonstration if you will um, of the types of food that they cook. Um, Chef Judy do, she's Korean, she cooks um, Korean food and what is good is that she's going to be here cooking Korean food with um, Nevis Mangoes incorporated into them. So that's that's a very good thing. Um, Chef Natasha Correct, she is all about being a vegetarian, all about vegetarian cooking and vegan cooking. So that's what she'll be cooking and demonstrating on Thursday. And then after the cooking demonstration, one of the very most important part of the event for them being here is for them to impart some of their knowledge to our local chefs. Um, Basically, on Thursday, they'll be doing demonstration clinics with the, with the local chefs. And those local chefs are the same local chefs who will be participating in the Division Chef's Mango Feast over at Oli Beach. Philip is making an appeal to persons to attend the festival's events. One of the, the most important things is for um, people to come out and participate as much as they can because it is this is the very first time since we've been doing the Mango Festival that we've had this caliber of chefs. Mm -hmm. It's not every day that you get an iron chef to come to Nevis. The Nevis Mango and Food Festival is expected to run from Friday 8th to Sunday 10th July. The second St. Kitts and Nevis Restaurant Week will take place from July 13th to 24th. During that period, local restaurants will offer special menus with exquisite selected dishes, fixed price dinner menus and lunchtime specials at reduced prices. It's to, to be able to provide accessible menus. Each restaurant will come up with special menus at discount prices so that local people as well as visitors will be able to sample a range of restaurants between the small snackettes and the finest dining restaurants on both islands to try to promote traffic to restaurants and provide a good opportunity to, to dine out during the slower time of the year between July 13th and 24th this year. Kathleen Pesolano, consultant in the Ministry of Tourism on St. Kitts, says one of the aims is to promote the use of local produce and this year it is pumpkin. There to offer a special price which is lower than what a person normally would be able to get a, that that type of a meal um, to be able to make dining out more attractive and even more affordable for this time. So it's a showcase of the chef's creativity, what the restaurant can do, and it really showcases the best of St. Kitts and Nevis cuisine right during that time of July 13th to 24th. There are four categories for the participating restaurants, lunchtime specials for 20 US dollars, as well as three course dinner specials for 40 and 60 US dollars. More than 40 restaurants across the Federation are participating this year, with 11 of those on Nevis. Assistant Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism on Nevis, John Hanley, says the initiative is a welcomed opportunity, especially for local producers. One of the things that we have discovered is that um, visitors like local things. 
I mean, somebody from America doesn't necessarily want to come to Nevis to, to, to get KFC because, I mean, that is everywhere in America. Um, when we had agri our agricultural fair this year, you know, some of the largest pumpkins that I've ever seen were, were on display. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity to create a linkage between agriculture and, and tourism. And um, with that strong linkage being forged by Restaurant Week, um, our economy can only get stronger. For more information, visit www.restaurantweek.kn or the Ministry of Tourism on either island. Still to come... But this year I have great confidence that I will win back the monarchy that I lost last year. The details after this break. Celebrating the old, showcasing the new, it's Culturama 42. Experience Essel Hosford, Miss Culture Queen Pageant, Miss Culture Swimwear Contest, the TDC Senior Kaiso Contest, the Talented Youth and Junior Calypso Contest, Hello. the Mr. Cool Competition. Great music at the Soka Monarch Contest. The Cultural Food Fair and the Grand Cultural Street Parade. Culturama 42, July 21st to August 2nd. The Caribbean's Greatest Summer Live. Visit us online at culturamanevis.com and on facebook.com slash Nevis Culturama Festival. This is a message for all mango and food lovers. The 2016 Nevis Mango and Food Festival kicks off on July 8th with the Mango Madness Street Fair in Charlestown. This year, the festival welcomes UK Food Network Iron Chef Judy Jew and English celebrity chef Natasha Corette. Contact the Four Seasons and Montpelier Plantation and Beach to make your dinner reservations with them now. And you don't want to miss the Navision Chef's Mango Feast at Awali Beach on Sunday, July 10th from 1 p.m. View live cooking demos and sample mango dishes prepared by Nevis' best local chefs. Call the Nevis Tourism Authority, 869-469-7550 for tickets and details. The Nevis Mango and Food Festival is presented by the Nevis Tourism Authority in conjunction with Ram Supermarkets, Brindley Gold Rum, and the Bank of Nevis Limited. Welcome back. The Nevision public has been invited to be a part of a campaign on tsunami awareness. The Nevis Disaster Management Department Tsunami Sensitization Series commenced last evening at the Alberta Payne Community Center in Bath Village and will continue tomorrow Thursday, July 7th at the Red Cross headquarters from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Singers Nevis approached the UNESCO IOC in 2014 and indicated that we would like to be a part of the international recognition of being tsunami ready. They have established a guideline since early 2011 where countries or communities can follow these guidelines to become tsunami ready. According to Director of the Nevis Disaster Management Department, Brian Dyer, similar sessions are scheduled for the Jessup's Community Center on Tuesday, July 12th, the Cotton Ground Community Center on Wednesday, July 13th, the Charleston Primary School Auditorium on Thursday, July 14th, and the Franklin Brown Community Center on July 19th. Those sessions also begin at 6 p.m. During our discourse with our our communities. We would explain the map that was developed. The yellow areas are the areas that would be evacuated in the event of a tsunami occurring. We recognize from the map that all our businesses, the business communities, the lots of schools, our emergency services, police, fire, etc. in these evacuation areas, a lot of our hotels. So it is important that all persons know the delineation of the inundation areas and um, also the assembly areas. There are red circles on the map that would identify where persons can assemble in the event of a tsunami and these 
assembly areas will also be used as drop points for food supplies and what food supplies and water or airlift if necessary. They, we have identified the Charleston playfield, the Jessup's playfield, the playfield at the Viogen Primary School, and the playfield at Whitehall as the main areas where we would provide the airlift for supplies. Indian persons would have to evacuate. A number of measures have already been taken with regards to the St. Kitts and Nevis Tsunami Readiness Program. We have also provided the publication, the public information and awareness campaigns to the various sectors. We have started with the schools. Uh, we have practiced the tsunami evacuation drills. We have established the there's a mechanism on sinkets where they will be able to look at the wave action. We call it a dart buoy that provides signals back to the tsunami warning center in Hawaii via satellite technology. We have established the tsunami warning focal point, which is the police headquarters on Basti Sinkets. And we should be embarking on installing some signs around both islands shortly, where a person will be able to identify the tsunami evacuation routes and the assembly areas for in the event of evacuation. According to Dyer, a team from UNESCO is expected to inspect the country at the end of October after certain parameters have been met to certify the country as tsunami ready. And finally, the general public would have known, of course, that I released on May 1st one of the tunes called The Solution, which is going on very well with the general public. Well, this evening I'm happy to report that I'll be releasing the second tune, which is entitled The MBE. Keith Dissendat Scarborough will release his newest calypso this evening on the On The Mark program on Von Radio at 8 o'clock. This one promises to be melodious and everything else you can think about Calypso. This is a beautiful Calypso. And if they're having problems reaching the level of the first one, well, they're in big trouble with this new one. This is one of the years we have been prepared very early. I could have released the two songs in March of this year, but as usual, I always release after music festival, and in this case, CPL. But in terms of myself, I've been prepared for a long time and I love both songs. They are both melodious and good message and provocative. The one this evening is going to be. And I'm sure the critics will come out, of course. And I always love the critics because I look at them as my inspiration. Because, you know, they're coming to ensure that you don't win. And that gives me, that motivates me to ensure that I work tremendously harder to prove them wrong. And it has been like that over the past years, and this year is no exception. But this year I have great confidence that I will win back the monarchy that I lost last year. This and that has performed at every Culturama since the festival's inception in 1974. With me, the standard has actually gone higher. And even if it, it was not higher, I normally maintain a good standard. Win or lose, you know the standard is good. Unfortunately, I can't say that for other persons. You see them go up this year and then down next year. And, you know, it's, it's, this year doesn't look as strong as previous years. But the judges are the ones who will decide what is strong and what is weak, not me. But I want to urge you to tune in this evening and listen to Real Calypso, and you will tell me what is strong and what is weak. Some may describe the song's title, The MBE, as timely, as Keith Scarborough just last week had the member of the most excellent order of the British Empire, MBE, formally conferred on him by the Governor General for his contribution to cultural development. And that brings us to the end of tonight's presentation of the Nevis Newscast. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing. Good night. One of the few places that has an untouched beauty 
that has captivated the hearts of many. Nevis is everything you imagine.